Ego, a concept of human psychology that correlates to a person's sense of self-worth. The word in layman terms is generally used with a negative connotation revolving around arrogance and selfishness. I don't make mistakes. I'm not just like the rest of you. I'm stronger. I'm smarter. I'm better. I am better. Unless you're an athlete. Superstars in sports naturally occur throughout history. Mike Tyson in boxing, Michael Jordan in basketball, Cristiano Ronaldo in football, to name a few of them. These athletes were raised in different environments, trained for different sports, but if there is one thing they have in common, it is that all of them have super egos. The success that these athletes received was not due to their talent, it was not due to their hard work, nay, it was due to their ego. Everyone that competitively participates in sports naturally has to work hard to show results. Now that may come easier to some than others, and that's exactly where talent comes in. It is what separates the bench warmers from the regulars. These athletes succeed in areas that everyone else worked hard to achieve. And then there are those that surpass even those with talent. These athletes strive for success not because they love the sport, but because they want to prove that they are the best in that sport. And that deciding factor is ego. Ego is what makes them push harder than anyone else to show and prove that they are the best among their peers and have their name carved out as a legend in the history of the sport. And that is exactly what the sports manga Blue Lock encapsulates perfectly. The Blue Lock philosophy revolves around creating the greatest striker through extraordinary egoism, something that was established since chapter 1. In order to become the world's greatest striker, you must have the ego to match. Then, does that mean that the program simply creates players that talk the talk but can't walk the walk? No, the players would be systematically weeded out until only the best of the best remain. These players are all forced to work hard if they want to stay in the program. However, the first selection, the only ones that ultimately stay are those with the talent to back their talk. And then among those talented bunch would be weeded out even further in the second selection, until only those with the greatest talents would remain. Now the question remains. Where does the ego come in? It seems like you're in a standard team picking situation where you only pick those that worked hard and are the cream of the crop when it comes to being talented. And you would be correct. That is if you're talking about creating a team. The Blue Lock program's sole desire is to create the world's greatest striker. And to do that, they need to have a player that had the hardware and the software to stand on the world stage. And also the capability of making a team full of talents and egos form around them. And this is exactly the next goal of Blue Lock after the second selection, which was to find the striker that would become the heart of the team despite the team being full of talented egoists. To have the ego to force this team to form around you despite each one of the players having a massive ego of their own is an accomplishment that only the best players in the sport are able to achieve. And the Blue Lock program knows that. And this extraordinary egoism isn't unique to just Blue Lock. As with the earlier examples in the video, this extreme egoism exists in real life and also exists in other mangas as well. Shoyo Hinata, a beloved character from the volleyball sports series named Haikyuu, demonstrates his ego throughout the entire manga. Despite the manga wonderfully narrating the value of team play, it also has selfishness and egoism deep in its subtext. Hinata and the rest of Kurasuno all move to score the next goal, with the only exception being Nishinoya the defense specialist of the team, but even he makes plays that help score points. Hinata always moves with the intent that the ball will go to him. His selfishness to score all on his own was what allowed his team to succeed, because they did not want to be swept under his ego just as much as his opponents have, and in order to accomplish that, they too had to exert their ego that pushes them past their limits. Mike Tyson, a legend in the scene of boxing, had an extraordinary ego that spurred his growth, to boxing stardom. I was gonna rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat your children. Praise be to Allah. His self-belief that he alone was the strongest in the world was what made him the strongest in the world, which even he admits he would lose if he did not have it. I would lose. Guys are more talented than me. They have more skill. But I look at myself greater than I actually am, and I'm successful. I'm not the tough street kid. 
I'm a god. You can't beat me. It's all psychological. Even his trainer, Customato, taught him to view boxing as 10% physical and 90% mental. You know, so odd that you said it. My, my mentor, Customato, his objective was to think of nothing. You're nothing, nothing's nothing but the objective, the job, mm. and that was his psychological warfare. The self-belief and selfishness displayed by Mike Tyson for real-life sports and Hinata for fictional sports both proved that Blue Lock as a sports manga revolving around egoist makes sense. The ego taught by Blue Lock isn't just about the person's sense of self-worth. It is also a mindset and a playstyle that helps you succeed in your sport. Now, it could be argued that these star players' success wasn't due to their ego, but was simply due to being more talented even amongst the most gifted individuals. But, chopping it down to simply being more talented is unfair to this super athlete. As Shinsuke Kita from Haikyuu wonderfully illustrated, to think they were good from the get-go is to condemn yourself to a predetermined defeat without even playing a match against them. To just give up and have yourself look up to this supposedly more talented player proves that you never had the mindset to become the best in the world in the first place. Once again, in the words of Shinsuke Kita, if I practice something from 1 to 10, then people like them would have done it from 1 to 20. Their extraordinary ego forced them to work harder than anyone else, even amongst their most talented peers. And through this mindset and playstyle, even made their egotistical talented teammates look up to them. And the Blue Lock manga managed to demonstrate this philosophy and mentality in incredibly entertaining fashion as well.